were good tour guides or, or great uh, leaders there, you know, that, that were able to take you through. We had a, a Jewish lady, so she, she knew Hebrew and could talk to everybody and took care of the everything. But at the same time, I, I want like a, a scholar of the, of the time. So I think that will be really important because, you know, you're getting so much. I can just imagine how much more you'll get if you're with somebody that really can add that emphasis on the time. So um, if you look on the, uh, the the Facebook, I don't know if it's on ours or, or the church's, but um, we had we had a chance to get prayer for as a church um, from Bill Johnson. And um, basically, Bill was praying for us as a church. I said, uh, Bill, we're having revival symptoms, and I need to know how to steward these symptoms you know, these are symptoms I don't want to go away, and these are things I want the Lord to to uh, bring us into. And so Elijah's getting ready to share with us. Uh, we're going to really uh, be open to moving in the spirit. Specifically, I feel like it's going to be a lot, a lot of, uh, we're going to do some prayer at the end. We want to just release uh, the God's kingdom because there was a lot of people who got absolutely supernaturally touched in just revolutionary ways that will never come back from being changed. Amen. And so we're really excited about what God's released. And part of managing the move of God, it starts within the heart of every leader here. Um, some say it, quote it this way. They say, as the leaders go, so goes the church. And as the church goes, so goes the nation. So scripturally based on that, we need to realize that as leaders, we have to challenge ourselves to higher places in Christ. We have to be hungry for the things of God. We have to be hungry for the things of God. We can't be apathetic and expect God's best. Hello? It, apathy is normalcy in the church, and it's not meant to be part of our lives. If you look at the church and you go, well, they're sleeping, I can sleep too. Let me tell you something. What you want from God is not in the slumber of the church, but it's in the reality of Christ daily. It's in the reality of Christ alive today. Because Christ is in you. And if you go through a slumber, if you go through a slump, you're not going to get to see what he wants to do. So it starts within the heart of every leader. And I tell you, I'm challenging every leader, every director, every ministry leader to not figure out what little you got to do. Because what you have to do has nothing to do with who you are. And when you start worrying about what you need to do, you're on the wrong train. You're eating from the wrong tree, on the wrong train, going the wrong direction. You need to turn around, get off that train, and start eating the right fruit, start living the right life. Because God wants to walk you into supernatural realms, supernatural realities that you're not going to understand at all. You're going to have to be okay with going out of the boat, walking on stuff that shouldn't hold you up, doing stuff that doesn't make sense, and we're going to have to get into that. Because God's not going to uh, have us, he's not going to bless a dream that's, that's man-sized. Man-sized dreams aren't God's dreams. So, it looks like it's God's responsibility when you say, we need to steward revival, we need to manage a move of God. Let me tell you something, it is not God's responsibility to steward what he's given man. But a lot of times we say, well, how can you manage a move of God? Well, let me tell you something. There's a lot of good ways. There's a lot of important ways. And the main things I want to just share really quickly. God's moving in, his sovereign, in, a, in a sovereign response. And I'm putting these two words together for a reason. Sovereignty is only part of God's plan. It is God's will to move in the earth. You have to believe that. It's God's will to move in the earth right now, today, in this church. Right now in your life, everywhere you go, if you can grasp a hold of that, then you could say, so sovereignty says, I bless you as a son, as a daughter. I bless you to walk it out. I bless you to walk in the things of God. I bless you to heal the sick. I bless I bless you even if the sound man don't bless me. I bless you to cast out devils. I'll say it again just in case the devil was scared. I bless you to cast out devils. I bless you to open blind eyes. I bless you. This is in the word of God toward us. I bless you to do the things of the kingdom of God. And if you're worried about how you're going to make it today and what they said and what she said, you're on the wrong train, going the wrong direction, and you're not going to get to a place of satisfaction. 
The wind's going to just destroy you because every wind, every care, every concern, it's just going to take you away. It's moving in a sovereign response, which means he's moving in response to what we are believing God for. So it's God's plan to move, but the response is to hunger. The response is to desperation. The, the des- desperate people do desperate things, right? You know, there's, there's nothing better than to see somebody that's first saved that just needs God. You know, I remember the days when I first needed God, and I always keep that my baseline to never go below. I don't want to be the ki- kind of Al Bundy reality like, well, back in the day, I used to play college ball. That was, uh, that was my day, or high school, whatever. It was like high school. I was a high school trophy winner. And that's your glory days. Like back in the day, I used to love Jesus. But today, you know, we're just settling down and coming in for a landing. No, that's not God's plan. Like the, the latter is supposed to be greater than the former. And if you, if you know who your God is, you know you're supposed to end with a bang. You're supposed to go out in lights. God wants to just illuminate the next couple years, the next decades to showcase how great he is. It's not about how great you are. It's not about how strong your body is. It's not about any of those things. It's about who God can be. As I said, Moses just started at 80. Moses started at 80. Like, we can't put these limitations on our life. So, there's a a sovereign response to hunger and desperation. Desperate people do desperate things. And here's the thing. Here's one thing that I want you to know what desperation looks like. Desperation looks like this. I'm willing to live for God no matter what. Listen, I don't know where the church got away from it, but God is not okay for you living for you. God is not okay with sinful lifestyles, and that's why the leadership first has to repent. Because if we sit there and and, and showcase in leadership that... uh, like subpar living, living that doesn't look like Jesus. And we say, well, it's okay. And then everyone else is going to inherit our subpar reality. And here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to raise the bar because part of desperation is absolutely saying, God, I want all that you have, and I'm willing to say I want more, and I'm willing to say I'm even willing to give up things that don't look like you anymore. I'm willing to cut off those things that don't look like you anymore. I'm willing to get into what you've called me to be. And it's not about rules and regulations, friends. It's about looking like Jesus. You look at Jesus, if it doesn't look like something in your life, you let it go. Real simple. Real simple. And the reason why, that's what desperation really looks like. It's not about you crying tears. It's not about you getting, oh, God, help me. Oh, not, that's not desperation. Desperation's willing to cut stuff off that doesn't supply life. If you want what God has for you, you'll cut everything off that don't supply life. That's desperation. Desperation's willing to put, gouge out your eye because you don't want to look at that no more. Desperation's, I'll cut off a hand because I don't want to grab that no more. Desperation's, I'm going to cut off a foot because I don't want to go there no more. Yes, it's a little extreme, Jesus, but he did say it. Jesus said it, right? You guys familiar with the Beatitudes? What is he saying to physically do it? He's saying if you're not willing to do it, you're not even worthy. It's just what he said. I know it sounds, I'm even a little convicted right now. But guess what? He wants me to be convictable. He wants me to be teachable. He wants me to be humble in heart and say, God, I need so much more. I need so much more. Listen, I, 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 I love the quote from Apostle Paul, so I can't even claim it for myself, but I love the fact that he said, you know, that there's so much more that he says, I have to forget today and forget former things and former achievements, and i got to press toward the mark of the high calling. Not that I've attained, 
but I'm going to press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. There's so much more that God has for you. And um, here's the, th the three things I want to leave you with. If we want to steward, and I really want leaders to hear this. If we really want to steward the move of God, and Bill Johnson, you know, he prayed and, and, and he, you know, I'm li listening to his quote on how revival was in his church. One person, as they had an altar call, who wants revival in this place? The church came up forward. Everybody wanted it. He said one lady in the front row, her hands, her finger or her hands started shaking. And he looked at his wife. He says, it's here. You know, that's ridiculous. Like God wants to move. He is moving. Now we have to learn to steward what he's doing. So for us to steward what he's doing is three things, guys. Hunger, humility, and holiness. Hunger. Humility and holiness. It says, it says without holiness, no one will see God. If you want to know why we're blind, it's because we're not willing to be holy. And then you wonder why somebody else is excited and you're not, it's because you can't see. Don't blame them on being radical while you sit there as a deadbeat. It's not fair. It's not fair. You know, I don't care how crazy or strange somebody is, and I've been around them all. I've even been one of them. But here's what I want you to know. I'd rather be crazy with the crazies than dead with the dead. Listen to me. I, I, went, to this, I went to this house in the Downs. Anybody know the Downs? It's by Sherwood Forest. It's, a, it's one of the nicest areas in Maryland. And it's right on the water. And we went there. And I was praying with all these guys. And there was a lot of uh, people that were in, you know, doctors and financial advisors and all these people. And as we prayed, I'm going to be super nice. Don't worry about that. I feel the love. As, as I was praying with these guys, I was like, cool. But I could see they were kind of done. I look over, there's these kids just getting nuked. And I was kind of like... And I just started thinking, would I rather be here or would I rather be there? And I'm thinking, would I rather be here with these guys who are done and kind of socializing and rub shoulders with these guys? Or would I rather be over there with the kids getting nuked? Just saying. Like, I could have been rubbing shoulders and impressing somebody, but something in me just said I'd rather be doing something else. And I get with these kids, and I'm like, I have all these kids around me, 14, 8 years old, 10 years old, just praying for me. And I'm like, I receive it, God. And I'm over here, and they're all over there. They're socializing, and I'm getting nuked, you know. I'd rather get nuked than be, anyway. And I'm saying that, guys, because please don't criticize people that are on fire, because it will be a sure way to prove that you're a fire extinguisher. And so I just challenge you guys, this is a season for leaders to rise up in hunger, humility, and holiness. We have to reach the level of humility because here's the thing. If you feel like there's resistance in your life, I can prove this, that if God is for you, who can be against you? And God favors the humble in heart, and he will launch the humble in heart. So if you want more favor in your life, if you want more blah, 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 buzzword, 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 who cares? God wants you to humble your heart and realize that if God is for you, who can be against you? Because if God is moving in your life, everything else is going to be automatic. Autopilot. It's going to be simple. It's going to be simple. And we have to challenge ourselves to say, if, if something is coming against me, then I have to go lower instead of coming against it. You weren't made to war. The battle doesn't belong to you. So it's time for us to learn that I'm not the warrior here. God is the warrior. God is the one who fights my battles. God is the one who's on my side. And if you'll start to realize that it's not your fight, put down your dukes and get on your knees. And I'll just read my last my scripture, and I'm going to have Elijah come up here. It says, 
If I shut up the heavens so that there's no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I or if I send pestilence among my people, but if or and my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now my eyes are open and my ears are attentive to the prayers offered in this place. And so I just challenge you guys, revival does bring a sword, but it's a sword that's necessary for what God wants to do in the earth. It's going to separate light from darkness, and it's going to go right through the middle of some of us. Some of it's just, just going to slice off the dead things. And I'm just challenging you this, guys. If you don't come in alignment, you're going to find yourself criticizing the very thing God's trying to give you. So it's really important that you start really bringing your heart lower and start saying, thank you, Lord, that you're in this person's life. Start giving thanks to God for how he's moving in people's life. Start giving thanks to God. You know, when, when, when healings are happening here, give thanks to God. Don't say, well, why are you using them? Just give thanks to God that he's doing great things so that he can do great things in your life. Amen? Amen. So I met Elijah. Uh, a, friend of ours brought, uh, a friend of ours brought him up to us. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I don't get super excited about people. I meet a lot of people, I meet a lot of spiritual people, and I, I just kind of go, oh, nice to meet you. I'm not starstruck anymore. I was. I was super starstruck a long time ago. And it's a tough place to be because the only star that should glimmer in our sight is the North Star, Jesus Christ. And so Elijah came, and, and as we started talking, and he, uh, he just started praying for me, and, and as he started praying, I noticed the things he was saying were all the things God's been saying to me. And then I started going, oh, this is different. I like this. So I knew it was the Lord talking. And I just, I just challenge you guys to open your hearts to what the Lord wants to speak. As we open our hearts, uh, the Lord wants to release some things. And then at the end, uh, Elijah, you just have everybody come up. We're going we're gonna to have people that were at the conference just release uh, fresh anointings, uh, they're all filled up, saturated, and ready to pray. Uh, our intercessors. Uh, it was awesome to be with, hanging out with some of the intercessors at the uh, at the conference. And so, and so, I'm just so grateful for uh, for for you guys being so hungry. So, so listen to this. I want to say one last thing for you guys. He, hear nothing I said in a rebuke, but I want you to hear what I said as as a challenge to go higher. I am incredibly proud of this church and the hunger that you have. I'm incredibly proud with the lifestyle that you're living. But I feel like God's saying there's so much more that I want to release. Will you be the people that I can release it to? Amen. Elijah, come on up. He preached the message already. That was the message the Lord gave me. So to pick up on where he started, it's time to your feet. It's unusual. Those of you who are traditional and expect the traditional things to happen in church, it's over. Yeah. It is over. We are living in a new day. It's a new dispensation. It is a new day. And get ready. So uh, Pastor David touched on certain things this morning that God gave me. Yeah, he prayed about we got to have a change in the heart, okay? So I want everyone put your hands over your heart. And I'm asking, Father, today in the name of Jesus to give your children a new heart, a new heart. Take away the heart of flesh and give them the heart, uh, the heart of stone and give them the heart of flesh in the name of Jesus because of what is coming so they will be able to hold the new wine. For the new wine is about to be released in this house, in this city, in this nation. The new wine. The Lord woke me up this morning. Oh, gee. Oh, oh, oh. The Lord woke me up this morning at 2.45. 
Pastor David asked me, how did you sleep? I said, well, I only got a few hours because he woke me up. And the Lord is talking to me and showing me. May I have that picture now? This is what I saw on the front of your church. You know, I've been to your church before in the spirit. I took a ride while we were at VO, uh, yeah, VOA. I saw all the flags, but this, there's fire, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. We call us one of his name. And the dove also represent him. And it is coming to this house. Don't ask me why, but God has chosen Pastor David and, and Pastor Tracy before the foundation of the world for such a time as this. Even them will not fully understand. But God is about to rock your boat. But you must be ready. The heart, it's a heart condition. The heart got to be different. The heart got to be ready. Because God is about to pour out the lot of rain. The lot of rain. He spoke to me six weeks ago and he said, the lot of rain is coming. The lot of rain is coming. So I said, Lord, yes, the lot of rain, 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 the lot of rain is coming. So I said, Lord, I've been hearing about this lot of rain. Would you explain to me? He said, the Lord of Rain is coming to restore the apostolic and the prophetic anointing to the church so my sons and daughter can rise to the occasion and reap the loss at any cost. This is no more days for us to sit and keep the benches warm. It's time for us to hit the highways and the byways. It is time. It is time also to add to the three things that Pastor David spoke of that God showed me also. It's in my message. I, I just want to follow the move of the Holy Spirit. Holiness. It is not a choice. It's not, it must become a lifestyle. God is calling us to holiness. The message that God was, was giving me was coming from 1 Peter chapter 4. And uh, two, uh, chapter 2 and verse 9. And I said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Without holiness, no man will see God. And God is not going to pour out this new anointing on you if you are not holy. So God is calling you to separate yourself from the world. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. We are a peculiar people. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. And God said, it is time. Break up your fallow ground. Repent. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, repent, repent, for the kingdom of God is here. There is no sin in the kingdom. There is no, no, no riotous living in the kingdom. It is a holy kingdom. It is a kingdom of love. Love, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Glory to God. I felt the anointing of the Lord this morning. And you're going to feel it before you leave this place today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 There's some prophetic utterance that I need to make over Pastor David and Pastor Trace. Where did she disappear to? Where? <laughs> uh, stand by your man. I want you to listen up. <laughs> stand by your man. <laughs> oh, oh, first of all, 
I, I, I mean, I'm just, just so taken over. I acknowledge your Holy Spirit. And I thank you for this house. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for the sheepfold gate that you're opening here in Glen Burnie. I saw the, the sheep gate has been unfolded, it's open. Do you know what I mean? The apostolic anointing is here. It is here. It is here. It is here. It is here. And those of you that love to come and you sit and you heard a message and you run, the time is coming, you'll be all out. You'll be all out on the floor. It's going to be like Brownsville here in this house. And he's talking about Bill, about Austin, Bill Johnson, what are you doing? Holy Ghost said, buddy, all you need to do is to ask me. For you have my heart. I have given you the Father heart, both of you. And the truth is, when I met them, I fell in love instantly with them because we have the same ministry. God sent me to the nations. I just returned from Colombia. And God sent me to the poorer parts of Colombia. Many a time, they don't even have an offering to give me. But I am not going for the money. I'm going to win souls for the kingdom. I'm going to bring redemption to the lost at any cost. So let me tell you what the Holy Ghost is telling me about this house. And, and that pastor, that minister, Ben, with Dave, I met him last night, briefly. He just dropped off this stuff, and he looks in my eyes. We never met before. And he said, I saw the fire of God in your eyes. We never met before. So let me tell you what the Lord told me before I, uh, and I'm going to read to, to just make it legal what I told you. I'm just going to read a scripture after. He already preached. But what God has told me, that he has called you, Pastor Dave, as an apostle, apostle to the nations. Are you hearing me? This is an apostle that God has called to the nation. God, the Spirit of the Lord is saying he wants you to get this house in order by continuing to equip and train men. For out of this house, I'm seeing apostles coming out of this house. I'm seeing prophets coming out of this house. I decree and declare prophets, apostles, teachers, pastors, evangelists. And, 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 and oh my God, this is for you, Pastor David. The Lord said he want dancing in this house. All the dancers, dancing. Dancing, do you know what dancing does? All the demons that walk in here sometime with the people, dancing drove them out. Dancing was originally in heaven and the dragon stole it. Therefore, God said, put dancing back in my group. There, there is a lady, oh, it is an unusual service. I, I can't even allow you to sit. I, I, I have so much, she showed me so. There's a lady that was dancing this morning. Can I, can you come? I want to show you your dance leader. The Holy Ghost showed me her. She was dancing with something on her back, just right here. Carol, Carol, can you come? And, and, and let me tell you what I saw yesterday while I sit at the house waiting for you. <laughs> I, I saw this. Uh, I saw the dancers in this beautiful flowing white robe. Yes, God said when you dance, you bring joy to him. Because my people don't know that I have feelings just like them. You know that our father has feelings? We can grieve the Holy Ghost. We can make him sad. So daddy said, daughter, when you dance, you bring joy to me. And I love you with an everlasting love. You were created to bring joy to me and please me. So today, God said, I'm giving you a new anointing. I want you to raise up dancers in this house. And they're going to dance to the glory of God. So here is the dress. Here is the dress that I saw. It's a beautiful white dress. And, and around the sash, golden sash. 
and you have small little bands of the gold around their foreheads. And she was wearing this white dress. And, and, and the, lead, the, 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 the uh, sleeve is like an angel wing when she holds her hand up. And there are times you do this and the people falling out. So this is what's going to bring revival. Revival is coming to Baltimore. Revival is coming to this house first. It's coming. It is here. It is here. So I, today in the name of Jesus, release. I release a special anointed. And I don't want you to stop her because the Holy Ghost is going to do a work and I'll just help her to get uncomfortable. And I want you to receive a new anointed in the name of Jesus. Receive. 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 God is going to do a quick work. He's giving you wisdom and revelation of new dance move that will line up with heaven in the name of Jesus. Release. Receive. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive. Fire of God. Fire. 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 Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So God said, Apostle, I'm enlarging your territory. Do you, I have a question for both of you and the church. Do you want, uh, what's the name of this town? Glenberry. Do you want Glenberry? You know, God, God, God asks questions. When he finds favor with a man or woman, he normally asks questions. What do you want? Do you want Glenberry? God has given you Glenberry and beyond. He's extending your border today as I speak. I saw a school of ministry coming out of this ministry. A school of ministry. I saw a daycare center. I saw a kingdom. Kingdom center. Kingdom center. Kingdom center. God wants the children, God wants the citizens of heavens to be self-sufficient. God wants the kingdom of, of, of uh, the, the children of heaven to be entrepreneurs. God wants the kingdom citizens to work for ourselves. So I saw it coming and beyond and beyond. So apostles, prophet, teacher, evangelist, pastor, and a dance group. And wow. Wow. The Joseph anointing. God said, I gave you the Father's heart and you even stretch it beyond. So I'm giving you, you know, the Joseph anointing that Joseph always make preparation for the future. The storehouses are coming. Storehouses. And past uh, Minister Dave is going to help to spearhead that. He spoke little about that, but God already show me the day the, 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 the uh, Joseph and the Barnabas anointing. what is this Barnabas anointing <laughs> the Barnabas anointing and the Joseph anointing is coming to this house you're going to make preparation and there will be store bins store bins glory to God store bins all over this place and 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 apostle and pastor this house is too small. Are you hearing me? God said, I am an extravagant God. And anything you ask me, my son, I will give it to you. For you have found favor with me. You are a man of the God's own heart. Favor. Favor. Divine favor has come upon you and Pastor Tracy in the name of Jesus. And I saw seven houses, seven houses, seven houses God has given to you because he saw how you care for his people. You took on Jesus' ministry. So these houses that you have, I don't know what you call them, are they redemption houses? Missions for America. Uh, missions of America. I saw seven, seven of them. Seven. And they're going to multiply. They're going to multiply. 
And let me tell you what else for you, the congregation. Those leaders that he's talking about, you better get ready. If you're not ready, you're going to be surpassed because I see God open up cell blocks. Cell blocks. Each of you that are showing yourself that you are consecrated and ready to take up the banner of Jesus Christ, to take up the call, the call. God is going to raise up cell blocks all over the city. And you're the leaders. And these leaders are, are going to be springboard to become apostles, prophet, teacher, evangelists, pastors, missionaries. Yes. And I see, I see God raising the standard of worship in this house. And I, I see, I see God using these young people. I wouldn't see an album, an album, an album. So I bless the worship leaders. I bless the worship leaders. I bless the worship leaders. And I call in singers, more singers, musicians from the north, the south, the east, and the west. In the name of Jesus, I saw a lot of marriages coming to. Marriages, marriages. Is, 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 is Amber here? Amber. God has said, daughter, you just don't know how much I love you. I brought you to VOA to erase the memory of the past. It was like a recording and it's been burned with the holy fire of God from your memories. And I saw the desire of your heart for a companion. <laughs> But you are married to me first. Yes. There are seasons. There are seasons that we go through. And you're not finished with me yet. So you gotta finish the call. When you reach that stage where you can handle the prophetic anointing that I'm placing on your life, and I can trust you, then I have a Holy Ghost filled man that is waiting. Are you hearing me? A Holy Ghost filled man is waiting, but you must stay, continue faithful. Faithful and study to show yourself approved unto God because I am doing a new thing. Receive, receive in the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And the coffee shop, it's going to surpass the Starbucks. Because this coffee is going to have grace. Who is the person that's going to be in charge of the coffee shop? Betty Ashley. Bring her. This coffee is going to have grace. And when the people taste this coffee, something is going to happen to them. And they're going to, that's why you're going to have, you're going to have counselors on board. You need full-time counselors on board because this thing is going to, is going to take off. It's going to take off. <coughs> Debbie? Deb, Danny. 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 Are you ready? Are you ready? Father, you show me that this coffee is going to be different because it's going to be filled with grace, the grace of God. So each time you prepare the coffee, I want you to bless the coffee and pray that God will touch each individual to drink a cup. So Father, I ask you for a special anointing to come upon Danny. That he'll fulfill the call. In the name of Jesus, receive. Receive.
this this is a one of your pastors this is Matthew 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 said he's always questioning the things always questioning but I zapped him at the VOA and he couldn't ask any question because it was me and now I'm ready to use you in the name of Jesus and Rick Rick yes you The Lord wants you to know that for some time he's showing you this house. And you've been hesitating. Actually, you've been literally um, procrastinating. But God said, I am the one that brought you here. Listen to this. I'm going to use you to do murals around this church because I've given you special talent. The name of the, the, the guy that did the temple, his name was Bez, uh, Bezalim. The anointing of Bezalim is upon you. And now it has been shifted from, from, from the, the outside. And now the, 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 the gift is coming back into the kingdom where it belongs. And you are going to do things that's going to stun the eyes of people. So, Father, today I bless these hands. And I ask you, Father, to activate the special gift and the anointing of Basilium. I can't even say his name. How do you say? Be -be Basilium. Be yeah, that's the name of the guy that God gave to Solomon. And he did all that fantastic work with the pomegranates and all the various painting that was on the wall that the, ex that the anthropologists they found. It was done by this mighty man of God. So God said, I'm releasing the Basilium anointing on your life in the name of Jesus. And out of this belly shall flow rivers of living water in the name of Jesus. For I call you, I've been calling you, I've been calling you, and you're resisting my call. You shall be a spiritual father in this house. Many of my sons are coming that never experienced the love of a father. And you're going to hug them in the name of Jesus. You'll hug them and they shall receive my love. Out of this belly throw livers of living water. Come forth. Come forth in Jesus' name. If you guys need some confirmation when you go out back and you see the lighthouse, that was a mural. That he gave to the church to hang. Um, all young people, God is about to pour the special anointing on the young people. Are they here? Ten up. What age did you call Samuel from that age? We need them here. Okay. And whenever a special occasion is happening, God wants his children in the house. In, in the house. Um, in the name of Jesus. Um, um, Sarah. Sarah. The, the Sarah. warrior princess, God said. She's Sarah. Can you run up here, please? Sarah. Sarah. Loose Sarah. that protein. This 
Where is Pastor Tracy? Oh, uh -huh. I am so much in the, in the, in the uh, glory. I, I, I really don't see a lot going on here. But God said, this is my special treasure that I'm loaning to this house. Because loaning. <laughs> Why? God has called this young lady and she resists because she do not like to make the preparations for um, presentation in teaching. But God is going to use her mightily as a teacher. In, in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 13, Jesus came from above, went below to the uttermost part of the earth, came back and gave gifts to men. Some apostle, prophet, teacher, teacher, evangelist and pastor. And that anointing is on your life. God said, stop fighting me and just surrender. I want to use you for my glory. And she's multi-talented. I, I bless her also in the area of the electronics. Those things, uh, 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 I don't know what you call it, okay? But pay attention. God is going to use her to be a teacher. Uh, I mean the office of a teacher, not just a teacher, the office of a teacher. And he has given you much wisdom. So get ready, get ready. Sarah, warrior, princess, raise your hands up to heaven. Receive in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, receive new anointing. Father, right now with the authority that you have given me as the apostle, prophet, teacher, I release the teacher's anointing upon Sarah's life right now. And I ask the Lord, stir up the warrior, the warrior anointing in her. For you call her as a princess. You call her to be different. You call her to be holy. You call her to be separated. And the Lord said, I want you to come up higher. I want you to read Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. For things you are always thinking that um, I uh, didn't love you or rejecting you. But God said, there's so much, my daughter, I want to show you. So, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you open her ears, that she'll hear what the Spirit is saying. And I'm asking you, Father, to do a quick work. Quick work. Quick work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. For the children, from uh, Samuel age up to 20. 20, all the 20 years come. If you're if you're under if you're 20 and under, come up here too, please. And I want you guys to hold hands. You know, there's a Joshua and Caleb generation that is emerging. Shh. I want you to listen so you hear. When these things come to pass, you will remember that it was prophesied in this house. So you got to listen. Hear what the Spirit is saying. There's a Joshua, Caleb generation that is coming. And God is going to use the children mightily. Those of you that know about Brownsville, there was a busload of children that arrived at, uh, 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 in Brownsville when the revival just started. And when all the policemen came and the firemen came because they heard a shout of when the Holy Spirit hit, they come out to bring order. The children got out of the bus and all of them come and just doing this. And the police, they were falling out on the ground with their guns and their bats on the side. So that is a start of what is coming. So all the children, but parents, you have a responsibility. You have to make sure that the children are equipped with the word of God. You minister the word of God in the homes. Minister the word of God wherever possible, whenever possible, so God can use them. 
So I want all the children and young people, raise your hands. Raise your hands up to heaven. Raise your hands. Shh. Shh. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to your hearts. Don't talk. Please don't talk. You got to reverence him. He's here. He is going to speak to each of your heart. Okay? Because you're very special. You are very special in the eyes of God. No plain. This is serious business. Okay. Pay attention. Okay? Come on. You're very special. You come out front. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Raise your hands up to heaven. Raise your hands. Raise your hands up to heaven. Good. Everybody raise your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that you cover these children right now. In the name of Jesus, raise your hands up to heaven. That you cover them, Lord, and pour out the holy fire upon them. In the name of Jesus, for this is the future generation that you're calling, Father, a generation that is fearless, a generation that will take this earth by storm. In the name of Jesus. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Some of you young people here, you, you have not given your heart to Jesus. You come to church, but you're still in the world. Still in the world and doing things in the world that is not pleasing to God. So I want you to say this prayer with me, everybody. Father, today I come in the name of Jesus. I thank you for loving me. I want to be a kingdom citizen. Jesus. You said in John chapter 3, verse 3, I must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. So today, I confess all my sins. I repent of all my sins. I thank you, Father, for for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire right now in my life. In Jesus' name, let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, go stand behind, go stand behind, go stand behind, stand, stand. Receive. He's going to touch you now. Just receive, just receive, receive, receive you. Come here. Glory to God. God has called you. He took you out of Africa and he brought you here. It's for a purpose. He wants you to take your salvation much more serious. There are things that others are doing at school you cannot participate. Do you understand why? You are a peculiar person. And he loves you with an everlasting love. Raise your hand up to heaven. So Father, I ask you to take away this heart of stone and give him a heart of flesh that it will yield to your word. I'm asking your Father, set, oh, set him apart, Lord. Give him full understanding of the word when he picks it up, that he will not be bored. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you, come upon him now in the name of Jesus. That when he read your word, he shall be changed in the name of Jesus. For you're going to use him mightily as an evangelist. And send him back to uh, Liberia to preach the gospel of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus, 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 more Lord, more, more Lord, more, 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh, in the name of Jesus, very special. Whoa, whoa. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I bless you, I bless you. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Come on, raise your hand up to heaven. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, come, come, come. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, I bless you. You're so beautiful. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. And I bless the parents, bless the parents, bless the parents, bless the parents, bless the parents. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name, yes, you. Yeah. Okay, children, you can go back now. Go back to your, 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 uh, to your, to your, to your classroom. <laughs> can we just celebrate our kids real quick? You guys are awesome. Bless you. Stretch. Stretch your hands toward this man. Just a little honor before him. Okay? Raise your hand up to heaven. Today, God wants to fill you with the Father's love. And all those things, places you have gone and done, it's over. And even now, God is healing your back with those vertebrates, those uh, discs, those um, things that's going on back there. He wants you to know, man, he loves you. That's why the devil fight you so much and try to kill you. But God said, I would not allow him because you're a chosen vessel. And your ministry is a street ministry. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, I have given you power to go and be a witness in Glenbury and to all the nations of the world. So Father, I'm asking you to do a quick work. Lord, I pray for a download of the Bible into his spirit man in the name of Jesus. And uh, whatever he read, you, Father, will bring it to his memory when the time come for ministering to others. Lord, I pray for a new anointing upon his life. It is written that healing is the children's bread. Today, receive your bread. Receive your bread. Receive your bread. Receive your bread in the name of Jesus. I speak to these vertebrates. What are they? Disc. 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 Is there any metal? Any metal there? I speak to these uh, disc, bulging disc or herniated disc. Be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to do something that you could not do before. Do something you could not do before. Could you bend and touch, touch your toe? What, what, what is it that you could not do because of this? Yes. I can do that. It just hurts. I, I mean, I can do but I can function. But is it hurting now? Yes. It's hurting now? Okay. Okay. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More. It was for this purpose that Jesus Christ died and came into the world. That it will take away the sins of the world. And by his stripes, you were healed. It is illegal 
for sickness and disease and pain to be in this body for this body was purchased with the precious blood of Jesus Christ more Lord father release your fire right now 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 in Jesus name how is it how is it it still hurt but well I, I, I want it to go totally but you got to work you got to work I know but 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 you got to work and release the faith release the faith no 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 just listen we have to cooperate with the word that is coming God call you out because he wants to heal you so so so, so all you do Lord just have your way have your way Lord be like a child you know those children that left here you told those children anything they would believe we got to be like them and the Bible said that God has given every man the measure of faith but we have to release the faith yes God can heal me in the name of Jesus more Lord more more thank you Lord for increase of faith right now in the name of Jesus Satan enough is enough take your hand off this man of God and Lord I consecrate him for the service to be used in the street the street ministries in the name of Jesus be healed in Jesus name gone all right all right by the by the time you get home it will be gone okay God bless you bless you bless you bless you bless you yes <laughs> okay praise God praise God praise the Lord so um I just want to read the, the scripture and then we'll do what pastor said with the uh, prayer okay I, I just want to read the scripture um, where's my my um, my thank you sir thank you so you may be seated and turn your Bibles with me to first Peter chapter 2 first Peter chapter 1 Uh, is it tall enough? <laughs> I just want you to know that what the pastor was saying and the message that God gave me today, we're on one accord. Okay? So, First Peter chapter 1. And we're going to start reading from... When you find your Bible, I'd like you to honor God by standing to your feet. The word of God is going to speak to you today because God is calling us to holiness. Okay? I want the word to speak. I won't even have nothing. I just want the word of God to speak to you. Stand to your feet. Okay? Let's, let's start from verse um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, whoa, mercy to us. It, oh, you hear, it's not just one mercy, it's abundant, abundance of mercy. Oh, glory to God, I'm feeling that. According to his abundant mercy, have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and, and, and undefiled and that faded not and faded not away. <clears throat> Reserve in heaven for you. Whoa, I got to read this again. The enemy tried to let me start it there. I want you to get it in your spirit. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefined and that faded not 
a way reserved in heaven for you. This is those of us that are walking holy, holiness, glory to God, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Speaking about the last days, which is coming, it's here. It's here. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, glory to God, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness. For those of you that are experiencing some stuff in your life that cause Heaviness is just for a season. For joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Though manifold temptations, yes, they're here. Manifold temptations, verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Verse 8. When having not seen, no, wait a minute, womb, having not seen, he loved. In womb, though, now he see them not yet believing, he rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired. I, I, I just have to, you know, stop for one second here. What we are experiencing now, angels, right? They were curious and waiting to to, to see what this is all about. The holy prophets that God reveal all the, the end times. So they did not have what we have in now. We have the Holy Ghost live inside of us. They did not. When the Spirit of God wants them to do a work, he move on them. The Spirit come upon them, but it didn't, didn't take residence as it is with us. So we are living in a glorious time to see the church of Jesus Christ come into the Fullness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church of Jesus Christ is coming into the fullness of God. And in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, it says, This church that some of us playing games in was purchased with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So don't trample on the blood of Jesus Christ. Take your calling seriously. Value your salvation. Realize that we are living in the last days. And it's only what we do for Christ is going to last. Glory to God. So the prophets did not have. They inquired and they searched diligently. Who prophesied of the, the peace that should come unto you. Glory to God. Well, all that movement, please. No more movement. Let's honor the word of God. This is going to be a word, church. And I have a warning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's a warning also coming with all the great, wonderful stuff that's happening. The fear of the Lord is returning to the house of God. Amen. And I want you to take it serious. Fear meaning the days of Ananias and Sapphira is coming back. And you know what happened? 
the glory of God is going to saturate this house that when you enter there, the reverence of God, it's either it's come upon you or it's going to floor you. So when you enter into this house, when you enter into this house under the authority of the apostle or the pastor, make sure you honor God. That was from the Holy Ghost. I didn't plan that. So of the great peace that should come unto you. Verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when when it testified before, beforehand, the sufferings of Christ, they, they foretell the suffering that Jesus Christ, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all the great prophets, they, 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 uh, David also, uh, you know, they, 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 they prophesied the suffering of Jesus Christ, yet they did not experience what we experience in right now. So, um, and the glory that should follow. Oh, hallelujah. So that glory that followed the suffering and the resurrection of Jesus Christ came forth the Holy Ghost, which is our down payment, glory to God, until we receive our new bodies. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now hmm, reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you. With the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Which things the angels desire to see. Desire to look into. Did you hear that? The very angels that work 24-7 for Almighty God. They did not experience these things that God has planned and revealing to us. And yet they desire, what does it say? They desire to look into it. They want to know. But yet, do you know that we're more precious in the sight of God than the angels? Because we were created in his image. And on the cross, just before Jesus went to the cross, when they arrested him in the garden, His sweat appeared as blood. And when they brought him to that high priest, they plucked him and, and they, they mocked him and plucked, plucked his beard out. That was for the restoration of our image. Glory to God. Are you hearing me? So our image that we lost in the garden was restored by the suffering on the way to the cross. And this church that some of us are playing in, they pierce a sword in his side. And out of that sword came water and blood. The blood was for the purchase of this church. And his heart was wounded so we could have, it was broken, his heart was broken. Now, we don't have to have a broken heart because he took it. So when the enemy is trying to do that to you, you let him know it was done at Calvary. The great, great work of Calvary, perfect in every aspect, has taken place at Calvary. It is finished. It is finished. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. 
Yes, this mind needs to be renewed. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, he said, renew your mind. Renew the mind. How do we renew the mind? In the word of God. First thing in the morning, last thing at night. Spend time listening to the word of God. Spend time Read the word of God. If you don't put the word of God in this mind, the devil will put something else. So gird up your minds with the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Gird up your lines. Gird up your mind. Be sober and hope to the end. For grace that is to be Brought unto you. More grace is coming. Because of the greater the tribulation, the more grace God is about to pour out. And the tribulation is here. We don't see a lot of it in America. But God has taken me to seven West African countries. Taken me to six cities in Colombia, Brazil, Dutch Caribbean. I have seen it. You don't know the liberty that we have in this country. And some of us trample on it. And we murmur and complain. But when you have a chance, you need to take a, tri a trip to some of these third world countries. And see what persecution is. Because we only read about it. But we don't know what it really is. No, the truth is we have not been experiencing true persecution. Of what the, 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 the disciples, the apostles, and the former churches went through. But there are people right now in nations that I have seen apostle with my eyes of what the enemy is doing. In Colombia, in Cuba, in China, in the Middle East, all over. So gird up your lines. God is about to pour out much, much greater grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 14, as obedient children, hear that? We're supposed to be obedient, not disobedient. And not flesh, and not fashioning yourselves according to the, the former lust in your ignorance. When we were in the world, all the sins that we have committed was done out of ignorance. But now you heard the truth. The word of God is truth. The word of God is a lamp to your feet. The word of God is a light to your path. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword that can separate your spirit from your soul. The word of God is medicine. Many of you are sick because you don't spend time in the word. The Bible says that your eyes are the gateway to the soul. So when the word of God penetrates these gateways, it, it flows through the entire body and fulfill that scripture. Because the scripture says, the word of God is medicine to all your flesh. Stop taking all these drugs that they're giving you and causing so much side effect and make you more sick. Go to the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh. But as he which have called you, listen to this. He which has called you is holy. You heard what the pastor was saying earlier? He which has called you, Jesus Christ has called you. Jesus gave his life for you. Jesus died on the cross for you. He is holy and he's calling you to holiness. For without holiness, no man shall see God. No man. We, we cannot be holy on a sinful neighbor giving a party. We're going there whining and shaking our booties with them. I don't want to be a legalist. But that's, that's beyond the norm of the Christian. How can they look to us if we go there and they're all unsaved and both of us boogieing down? And then you call and say, oh, I'm going to church tomorrow. What, 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 type of, what type of impression did you leave? 
You know what Jesus called people like those? Hypocrites. Whitewashed tombs. And I believe me, I don't want to be a legalist, but the word is coming forth. And God wants us to get our acts together because he is coming. And before he comes, the Antichrist is about to reveal. You know, past apostle, a lot of people is preaching this pre-trib and this all type of tribs. And we're going to be taking note of here. Nobody's saying that the Antichrist is coming before Jesus. He's coming. And many are going to be deceived. Because we don't know the word. We don't spend time in the word. We don't honor the word of God. We don't share the word of God. But we're now in the fifth seal. Another thing, they're not preaching the seven seals. There are seven seals. And these are the time clock of the return of Jesus Christ. So I saw all these guys on television. Oh, Jesus could come tomorrow. No. He cannot come tomorrow. Because the Bible must be fulfilled. He cannot come until every man, woman, child, and nation heard this gospel of the kingdom. He cannot come until all seven trumps be revealed and fulfilled. We're in the fifth right now. So the fifth seal is reconciliation. It's a lot of studying. Study, study, study. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. And then what happened? We're about in the middle of the fifth seal. Then come the man of position, the sixth trump. You know what happened? The Antichrist come and deceive so many. The great falling away because many is going to go off with him. And then after all of that taking place, the last trump is going to sound, that seven trump. And, and uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 says, The trump of God shall sound, and the cloud shall burst, and the King, Lord of Lords, along with the saints of God. So a lot of people that are preaching this message, oh, they're going to come forth from the grave. Those that are accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, they are with him. They're not there. Know the word. Glory to God. I, I, I just need to go there. The Holy Ghost, you just do your thing here. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so verse, where are we? Where, where are we? First, verse 15. <laughs> oh, verse 15. No, yeah, you, you be holy to be holy in all manner of your conversation. And that conversation is not only when you speak, it's everything that you do. Your walk, your talk, your action, the way you behave on the job, the way you behave in your workplace, the way you behave in that apartment, the way you behave at these parties, and don't get me wrong, it's okay to party, but you got to party with the right people. <laughs> Verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Verse 17, and if ye call on the Father... Who, without respect of a person, judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning there, here in fear. In other words, we're passing through, we're sojourning. It's an old thing. sojourning, me, you're passing through. We're passing through. But with the fear of the Lord, we want to fear God in everything that we do. Hallelujah. Holiness is not only to be set apart, but everything that we do holy must, must be seen. Everything we do in our dance, in our work, in everything we do. Holiness unto the Lord because we do it as unto the Lord. Just like this priest this morning came up here. 
you know, many of us uh, um, have uh, mixed feelings about Catholics, but I'm seeing God has opened my eyes, Apostle. I'm seeing God's children everywhere. I'm seeing them. And the time has come for us to remove the scales from our eyes and stop judging because there's only one judge. All right. Verse 18. For as much, <laughs> for as much as he know that he were not redeemed with corruptible things. Listen to this. As silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your, from your fathers. Many of us are bound in tradition today. This is how my mama and my papa do it, so I'm going to do it. Hey, if you're a child of God, you're now under the authority, rule, and reign of the king of kings, lord of lords. So he's, he is the king of kings, and he has a kingdom. He is the king, dom, meaning dominion. And he's going to be the king of kings. We are the, king, the kings. For we're in, in, um, in our first uh, uh, chapter of Revelation, he spoke of us. We become kings and priests and reign with him. We're going to reign as kings and priests. Hallelujah. So he is the king of kings of all us that are kings. Glory to God. But with the precious blood, we were bought, redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of the lamb without blemish and without spot. Verse 20. Who verily was foreordained. Okay, before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you. 21. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and your hope might be in God. 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto the unseen love of the father, of the brethren. See that you love one another. That's another thing. We must love one another. When we love one another, we will not bite. When we love one another, we will not speak behind their backs. We will tell them in love. I don't care what it is. I'll give you an example. Just before I went to the convention, I went to one of the church that God allowed me to oversee. And I love the pastor. The children loves me. They think I'm the grandpa and I accept them. And she ran up to me and said, Dad, oh, Pastor, do you like my hairdo? Half of her hair is black. The other half is blood red with some things at the tip of it. I said, no. <laughs> Should I lie, pa Apostle? I could, I, I normally we would say, oh, yeah, but, you know, I'm not going to lie no more. You got to tell the truth. Got to tell the truth. It's unnatural. I'm not talking about normal red. Fire engine red with things on the tip of, or on the ends of it. An apostle, you love it? No, I don't. And it's time for us to speak the truth to our brethren. If you love me, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Don't butter me up. Tell me the truth. Glory to God. So love one another with pure heart. Are you hearing me? Love one another with pure heart fervently. 23. Being born, listen to this, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible by the word of God. So the word of God is the incorruptible seed. It was that seed that the Holy Ghost took and placed inside of Mary. And that seed become the living word. 
Jesus Christ is the living word. The word of God is the written word. It is holy. It's incorruptible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 So his word abided forever. 24. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof fadeth away. 25. But the word of the Lord, hallelujah, endure it forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And let me tell you something. Is a warning. A lot of people are changing the word of God because they say, oh, um, we're in a time right now that the, the, the language should be like in America and, and um, we should take out the, the, um, the, the masculine gender and just make it no gender. Listen, be aware of this new international version. God will judge us when we know the truth and go to these, these I don't know what's happening to them, but there's a lot of false translation coming out. And we must be careful. Be careful. The word of God never changes. God protected his word because his word is holy. His word is going to last forever. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. But my word, think about it. The place where God dwells is going to burn up in fervent heat. Can you believe that? That's what the word said. But his word abided forever. Glory to God. One more, one more verse and, uh, and then we do, we, we're going to pray. Wherefore, laying us, this is the part, this is the part, this is the part I want you all to listen. Listen carefully. God is speaking. You see, this is what is missing, apostle, from the church. I travel all over the world and what I observe, and I'm telling this is getting to be very dangerous, especially these mega preachers. They get up before you and they will say whatever they want to say. But when they get to the word of God, they will rush and they give you one little line. You have to beware, be careful of that. The word of God stands forever. Man's words is not as important as God's word. God's words can change you in the twinkling of an eye. Man's words is not wisdom. God's word is wisdom. And if you're under a teaching, when you go to these places, and, they, and you know, they, they, they do it so fast as if they say, I, I don't want to do it. You know, my word is so important, I've got to go on with my message. Hey, what message? Who gave you that message? So be, be careful, okay? The word of God is important. You know, what we observe of the life of Jesus Christ, when, he wa when every time he walked into the temple, a lot, of, a lot of people believe that he preached a lot of sermons in the temple. You know what he did when you go in the temple? He pick up the book and he read. And when he's finished, he closed the book. The last book that he went, walked into the temple and he read was Isaiah 61. And after he read it, he said, God has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To heal the eyes of the blind. To set the captive free. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's when Jesus' ministry began. And then he closed the book and he said, this day is the scripture fulfilled. Say with me. This is the acceptable day of the Lord. This is the acceptable day of the Lord. One more verse here. This is the final one. So, put away, wherefore, leaving aside all malice. We're guilty of that. Most of us, okay? Somebody step on your toe. And you know, you see that person, you shrub your shoulder in your past. Stop it. No malice in the kingdom of God. God called us to be holy, and we've got to practice holiness. No malice and all guile. 
all hypocrisy and envies, all evil speaking. Put them away. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God, that he may be grown up thereby. And, I, I, and I'm going to go to verse 9 and we're done. Verse 9 says, to, to just be in agreement with the apostle for you sitting and not moving to get into what God prepared for us that is coming. But be ye, verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that he should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness as into his marvelous light. So who are we? We're a royal priesthood. Say with me, I am a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Father, seal this word with the blood of Jesus to my spirit so I will yield to your word, your voice, and your voice alone. I will yield. The voice, of another, the voice of another, I will not yield. Will not yield. Thank, you, Thank you, Father, for doing what you're doing, what you're doing. In, my in my life. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I, receive I receive your word. I receive your warnings. Receive your warnings. And, now, and now, Lord, make me a vessel, me a vessel. of honor. honor in Jesus' name. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Wait, 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 wait one second. Yeah, just yeah. before we do the prayer, just before we do the prayer, the Lord taught me, every time you open your mouth to speak to my people, give an altar call. So I want to do, we should do that first. I saw what happened at Benny Hinn's conference. <laughs> and you know, it's the first time I've seen that done. So, that should be a lesson to all of us. So if you're here today, where's my, um, my pianist? You see, we bless him and he disappear. <laughs> you're going to play like you have never played before in the name of Jesus. And what was that sound that was coming for this morning like a banjo? I heard a sound this morning in, in the last song. Oh, that sound is lining up with heaven, and we call it into this house in the name of, you know, there's a sound, there's a sound that's associated with heaven, because eternity is evading earth. So what's taking place out there has, has to start taking place here. Oh, yeah, shut out of my center. Yes, Jesus, let your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven in the name of Jesus. Give us some sound. So, I'd like you all to be seated, please. And I want no movement, please. Remember, we've got to honor God and we've got to be sensitive to the souls that do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. So anyone under the sound of my voice, if you're here and you do not or never accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please raise your hand. I would like to pray for you. So everyone here is saved. You know what that means? You, you know what that means? No condemnation, but you guys are not doing a good job. Every time we gather, there should be what? Visitors. So you're not fulfilling Acts chapter 1 verse 8. 
we supposed to be a witness wherever we go. Hey, I go to the most wonderful church down here. And awesome stuff are happening. I would like to invite you. This is how the church grows. And the Lord gave me a scripture, Apostle. Daniel chapter 7 verse 18. Someone can you read that please to the congregation. This is your map. Oh my God. The Lord said there's a mandate on this church for souls. Well, where, is, where, where is Pastor Tracy? Where's Pastor Tracy? <laughs> well, I want her to hear. Holy Ghost says, tell me. There's a mandate that is on this church for souls. Glory to God. Now hear what Daniel said. Daniel is one of the prophets that foretold the things that were coming. And he knows that God was building something called a church, but you never know what it is. But now we are experiencing it. And this is your job description. Hear, hear this out. Is she coming? I want her to hear because she's such an awesome soul when I see. And the spirit in her is going to leap when she hears this. So, God said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now, that's not our job to build a church. Our job is to build the kingdom. Read it. Okay, read this. Verse 17, right? Or no, verse no. 18. Verse Daniel 18. chapter 7, verse 18. Yeah. But the saints of the Most High. Listen carefully. Shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever. The whole glory to God. Even forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. So the kingdom of God was prepared for us before the foundation of the world. But we must, as he said, you cannot sit. You got to get busy. You got to go to the highways and the byways. Because Jesus gave us the great command. Go ye out. Go ye out. Go. What's the, what's the name of the church again? Stand to your feet. Redemption House Life Center. Arise, the, the, the soul is Spirit speaking here. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Go. Souls are dying. Men are crying. Go. 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 Get them at any loss. Any cost. Any cost. And I saw evangelistic where is the evangelistic uh, leader that I met at uh, VOA? Chris, Chris, come on here. I saw God sending them out in twos. Okay? So you got to get busy and start sending them out in twos. I don't know what you're doing now. But the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I want this house. There's a mandate on this house. There's a mandate for souls. For, for you know, the Lord showed me some time ago. One of my spiritual daughter said she saw the Lord crying. And he said, Lord, why are you crying? The Lord said, I'm crying because all these children dying and going to hell. And the church is playing church. So church, rise up in the name of Jesus. Souls are dying. Men are crying. Father, I'm asking you for a new anointing. I activate this evangelistic anointing on his life that out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water in the name of Jesus Lord let him influence those that come under that follow him and Lord give him wisdom knowledge and understanding and he instruct them and send them out in twos just as just as you did when you walked the earth for souls are dying men are crying and Lord you're relying on us So your favorite, the Lord said you love, you love souls. And he gave you a scripture. There's a mandate on this church. You weren't here. And both of you are responsible. There's a mandate on this church for souls. God said, I will build my church. He's the one built this church. 
and the gates of hell cannot prevail. We stand in that truth. But we must build the kingdom. So we go, we, bring, we, we, we win the souls, and we bring them in. The church is like a hospital, okay? We, uh, we clean up the wombs, and we put the uh, bandages on and restore them and said, go into the kingdom. Glory to God. So we keep on building the kingdom of God by bringing the souls in. And God said it is harvest time. It's harvest time. Harvest time. Go. 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 You know, you must know this song. The black churches used to sing, go. Oh. Go. No, 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 no. La, 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 go, go, go. Nobody here my age? Nobody here? <laughs> oh, my Lord. However, the Lord wants to bless you. Lord wants to bless you. Lord wants to bless you. You've been faithful. And you're a gracious hospitality houses. Oh. And the presence of the Lord is with you. And God said, I'm granting the desires of your heart. That thing that you're praying for, and then the enemy throw that doubt in there, doubt not. I'm doing it for you. In the name of Jesus, receive. More. In the name of Jesus. There's a young man that was sitting here beside you. Pastor David. Pastor Oh, and there's a oh, there's a lady here with a female problem. No shame. Come. The Lord wants to heal you. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? No shame. Come. God wants to heal you. Yes. There's more than one. More than one. More than three. More than five. Come. Quickly. Raise up to heaven. Yes. So God said, I'm calling you, come up higher. I'm going to wake you up in the wee hour in the morning, and I want you to read my word. I'm going to visit you. Forget the things of the past. Father, I'm asking to erase the memory of the abuse. Things that were spoken over him, I cancel them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask you to renew his mind. Give him a fresh love for the word of God. Father, I'm asking you for an appetite that will never be quenched until Jesus comes for the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're so precious. God is healing you right now as we speak. By his stripes, you were healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So precious. He loves you so much. Just receive your healing. Receive your healing. No shame. No shame. I break off every shame, every word that was spoken over you in the name of Jesus. Look at me. Your father loves you. Do you believe that? He loves you. No shame. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on. And I'm calling out a few men. No games. P struggling with pornography. Come. No shame. Come. Okay? Come. Pornography. Come. 